All right, grand finals. Nico versus Bolton. Bolton has clawed his way past tons of really, really talented opponents to make it here to the grand finals. Meanwhile, Nico has yet to drop a. S okay, he's dropped one game against Fearless. That's right. But other than that, he is, of course, in the winner's side of the bracket, undefeated as far as matches go. Bolton almost gets that dunk down, but Nico is going to be slightly favored here. He needs to be defeated in this best of five and then another best of five in order for Bolton to win. So he's got an uphill battle to climb. But Nico is going for this dribble right into the corner. Bolton doesn't read the rim, and Nico has scored first blood. Nice from Nico. I'm excited to see our first best of five. I mean, these guys have been playing so well. Lots of great games that I think we're deserving of a best of five. And so now we get to see a lot of hoops action. And this is going to be a great matchup for it. Nico taking the early lead. Yeah. Ooh, kickoff goes sideways. This is kind of what I would more expect to see from these sorts of tip-offs is people, if the goal, if the scores are close or um, if... Well, okay. when the scores are close, people are going to take more neutral tip-offs. The ball is either just going to drop very casually or go completely sideways. That was very close for Nico. He almost got bumped. As players start to get more desperate or more comfortable, we might start to see some mix-ups. But I have a feeling that Bolton's got a few tricks up his sleeves as far as tip-offs go. He needs to be careful, though, for those bumps. Although he, he seems to be wanting to bump Nico more than Nico is trying to get the bumps onto Bolton. He's on the ceiling next. Oh, See if he can do something here. Flips forward. Is Nico ready for it? Gets the save. Has the perfect read onto that ceiling shot. He is no stranger oh to ceiling goodness. shots himself. Another opportunity, though, for Bolton. Is he going to be able to find it just inside the rim? No. My goodness. Nico's defense right now, despite going flying a couple different times with no boost, has been able to make it back. And not on poor attempts from Bolton either. Good shots from him. But Nico staying uh, a full clean slate for now. This flick not quite connected. Bolton has got some open court, but it's just so hard to score those, and Bolton could not get above it to force it down. So he is still looking for his first, but a nice use of the flip Whoa. off the wall. Did Nico find it? Is this in? No, it's not. You hoops people knew it wasn't, <laughs> but I was convinced for a second. Still a crazy pinch. That was <laughs> off of the rim. Nico, we saw from Bolton last match that there was a couple of crazy rim pinches. Nico scored against first killer though, right, with that like epic rim pinch, I think. Or it led to a goal. Mm -hmm. it was, he, he was traveling one way, pinched the ball, and it went clear the opposite direction. That's just magic, if you ask me. Nico, though, is going to be taking this to the back wall. Gives the ball up to Bolton, but he's waiting patiently in that corner, trying to get the flick, but Bolton is having none of it. Gets the pinch off of Nico's car to send it forward. Now Bolton is, needs to be careful. Again, the bump game is just ever prevalent. Bolton needs to be just keep that in the back of his mind that Nico just wants to chase him all day. A, a well placed bump could mean a goal guaranteed. Just like this, Nico's got the ball in Bolton's half. He just needs to take the shot and make sure Bolton does not have the follow-up. Bolton does get the save, though, spawning in the perfect spot. But time is running out for him. He's only got two minutes to make a response to Nico's one goal, but Nico is taken out of the play. He lands on the back wall, but that was an interesting pogo off the ball. Back well, to Nico. Back one thing I'm seeing from both these guys uh, that maybe is a little bit more prevalent than we saw before is and both of them know they cannot give the other any space. When, when these open dribbles are starting that have turned into air dribbles so frequently, kind of like right here, Nico actually given a little bit of space this time, but he, it doesn't matter, man. He'll find a way to save it. Um, they have not been letting each other take those options as much as before, but as I say that, Nico, trying to make me look dumb, is going to get both in lots and lots of space, but the pre-jump save is absolutely there. So Nico almost missed that boost. He's going to find some bumps on the Bolton. When these cars are close, I just I get really nervous that, you know, one untimely bump could just lead to a goal. And here, Nico has a chance. Bolton it gets rim, but somehow he gets the save. Getting that touch to the rim for the assist. He might be able to transition this. He's going to try to take the shot, but it's too low. He doesn't recover very well either, and Nico's going to be on the return, trying to find the demo on the Bolton. He's still looking for it. Bolton jumps a couple of times just to stay away from Nico, but that's going to go off the sidewall. Bolton on the back wall with the clear. Back out to Nico. Nico... Gets lucky with that boost spawn. He's now going to be on a lot of boost. Tries to keep it lifted up. Bolton jumping over and over again just to keep that ball out of harm's way. Nico next. Whoa, careful. <laughs> That's your own net there. He's going to have it lifted up. Uh, I don't think there's a lot he can do with this dribble. He's going to have to just force the 50. Yeah. Gets it. But he's going to be hurting for boost. Although Bolton is completely empty. So Nico gets the clear. Yeah. Nico had been doing a really good job of taking boost. I, I don't know why Bolton didn't have boost in that opportunity. Oh my, Nico is just finding a way to save. It seems like he's leaving open windows, but he's always able to close them. And we have seen a couple missed uh, flicks and missed touches in Bolton's half from Nico. 
Uh, not quite as strong. This this shot is it a bouncer? And no, it's not. It's the rim. He's still here. He's taking he might shots, have had an opportunity oh. to take it high. But 23 seconds left, and all of a sudden the time is ticking down. I mean, I I wasn't sure if you were right about not a lot of time left at two minutes, but you seem to be exactly right. Yeah. As Bolton has uh, yet to find another one. He's got 10 seconds left, but this is a good opportunity oh. for him. If you get over Nico, Nico pops it high. Bolton's got a lot of time. Nico very low on boost. That's such a good Bolton, touch. Soft touch. Oh, Not what enough. a save. Not necessarily over, but this has got to be a tough spot to play from. Nico on the back wall. Coming <laughs> off of it. Oh, no. Can I get a double touch off the rim? I'm calling it. I think it's going to hit the ground. Yeah. Yes, Nico. And the low scoring one will take game number one. A valiant effort from Bolton at the end, though. That was He had a couple of really good shots, and I my heart skipped a beat when he read the rim, right? He took the shot. It was too low. Nico hadn't jumped yet. And Bolton was still there. The ball bounces back from the rim into his car again. But unfortunately, his touch goes just over and deflects off to the other side of the rim. But it, sometimes these games get uh, frustratingly low goals, even in 1v1s. Like, you expect 1v1s to have, uh, as soon as someone makes a mistake, right, it's a goal. But Nico, it just seems like defensively, he, he doesn't let anything through. And it's got to be frustrating for Bolton to just play that entire game without getting a single goal where the rest of the tournament he's probably been scoring you know pretty high in the you know uh sometimes double digits but li likely you know four or five goals a game and then you transition right, I mean, to this where you just shoot over and over again and nico doesn't let a single thing through look it's 13 shots here exactly that's what i was saying one. we just watched him win two games with seven you know seven or more goals and he and he he more than double outshot nico but nico has just had such great defense the, the one goal that Nico got, he squeezed it over the side of the rim and just kind of used that rim as an, an extra offender, I guess. Not really a defender, but defending Bolton away from the ball. And that was how there he was able to find the one goal. Hopefully we see a couple more goals, but, you know, whatever it takes to win as we head into this game number two. To the sidewall. Nico's going to fill up on boost first. It's going to be a dicey situation for Bolton only being on just a pad or two. Nico takes it over the opposite sidewall. Takes a shot. I think that's going to be just out, and that gives Bolton some time to recover. I'm not sure that backflip was intentional, but he's going to be going up with it. Nico deflects. Here comes a shot for him. Lifted up. It's not going to be enough. Bolton's going to be uh, easily able to deflect this one outside of the rim's reach. Now Nico recovers, holds it. A slow play again. These have been really successful against First Killer, and yet again with the flick, he's waiting to see when Bolton goes for these, uh, when he gets like. Scared and nervous that Nico is going to go for a ground air dribble. Bolton jumping off the wall though plays right into Nico's hands. Yeah, Nico is so lethal with these plays. These are the kind of plays that, in front of the net, we just were not seeing anybody else finding a way to score. Uh, you know, popping that one off the backboard. Maybe if Bolton had just been a little bit more patient and waited on the backboard, he is going to muscle Nico. Oh, no, he's not. Nico, he will not let a goal in. This not has got to be goal. so frustrating yeah. for Bolton. <laughs> Oh, he's got another touch here. No, he doesn't, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> that bouncing off of the rim was just enough to keep Nico or keep the ball inside the net. Oh, <laughs> Nico has what what he has down for me is what I'm seeing is there is a money spot right above the rim mm -hmm. that makes it so impossible to save that that helps to use that rim in scoring that a lot of these players can't find, even some of the other people who I think play hoops more often seem to not be able to find as often as Nico does. He's finding it every time, and mm -hmm. that is how he's finding these goals. I think it might be a little bit more intricate than that, because Nico, he's looking at the placement of the car, and yikes, he gets yet another goal. He's he's seeing where Bolton is defending. So every time that Nico scores a goal, watch where Bolton's car is facing moments before Nico takes a shot. That completely informs you of his decision there. He wanted that ball to go to the front of the net because that's over the, t over the head of Bolton, right? Other times... If Bolton is trying to guard the near post, Nico's going to shoot it just over the rim so that Bolton has a hard time to save it. Positioning is absolutely everything, and there's not a lot of, uh, there's, I mean, no tutorials on, on where to position on defense. I think the only way you're going to know might be on this channel itself, but um, it's it's so important. It's just so important to to face towards the rim whenever you can, or um, face towards the middle of the net, I should say, whenever you can, because you need to cover absolutely everything. And you're alone out here on defense. The rim, it seems small, but it's a large area to cover. But Bolton is on the scoreboard there with that shot to the ceiling. Yeah, I think Nico's mistake was hitting it there in the first place, but really, really good move from Bolton back to the... Oh, I see Nico hit it to the ceiling. Yeah, Nico was not going to have Bolton score. He said, you can have a goal, but it's going to be because I hit <laughs> it It has to be you. my goal. <laughs> <laughs> So far, tip-offs seem to be going 
Uh, really not either, not in either one of these guys' favors. Oh, right. nice cut in field. Nico! My goodness! <laughs> it seems that way, He's right? He's crazy! It seems that the it's tip just... offs are not going in anyone's favor, but. <laughs> Bolton making a challenge off the wall. Nico making a read. I mean, he just has a read on what Bolton's doing on defense. I mean, he's inside his head. He knows yeah. what he's going to do at every moment, and he's got that vision on him. You're right. And just making the right play. This has got to be so frustrating. It's so tough to play against a defender like Nico because Bolton has made a lot of great opportunities. Like, somehow Nico's going to save this one. I'm, <laughs> at this point, I'm not even expecting Bolton to score ever, even that seemed like a great shot to me. But Nico's always there. Yes. And they just got to beat you down. I mean, I think that might have been part of the first killer series where Nico just frustrates you. Yeah, no doubt. And there gets a bump as well on the Bolton. If he didn't get a bump, at least his presence alone was enough to warrant that goal. Again, it's just what Nico is so strong at is like acting on impulse, you could say, like the snap judgments of seeing his opponent make even the slightest of a mistake, like a micro mistake, and he just capitalizes on it, forcing your forcing his opponent into a worse and worse and worse position until eventually the ball just lands inside the net. There's a low shot yeah, again. He, Once again, Bolton tries to go for that boost deal, thinking he has time, but Nico says, uh-uh, I've got the shot lined up. Crosshairs are locked on target. I think what's so crazy is what Nico's doing is making it look like Bolton's not a great defender, but we know he is. We saw mm -hmm. him play earlier. But he's just playing this so perfectly. I, I really do think it's all credit to, to Nico. I mean, Bolton maybe isn't playing his best game, but Nico is just being so precise. It's just crazy. Ooh, that's a that's a heck of a flick. I think Bolton's going to be just fine carrying this one out. Nico is going to be waiting underneath for the 50, but this looks like it could be a, a position onto Nico's net. The shot from Bolton does not come through as he backflips. Going to be up to Nico next. He takes the shot going to be dangerous as it bounces off the rim and does head in for the 7-1. to one. Nico, again, putting this, these balls into very tricky to save positions. Yeah, when other players are taking these shots off the backboard, they're, I mean, you'll have to tell me if Nico's doing this on purpose. He seems to find the rim every time, which makes it so much harder to save, even on a backboard touch as it comes out to the front of the rim. I mean, if that lands somewhere in the middle of the net, Bolton is going to be able to save it away. But, but Nico just has a laser sight on that rim. Yeah, he does. Two minutes to go. Not looking good for Bolton. I think at this point, jeez, <laughs> you just try to put this game out of, uh, out of your mind if you can. Try to reset and, <laughs> and get ready for the next game. Wonder I, how. And I actually do. I, I do like to see what I think I'm seeing from Bolton as this game goes on. I mean, it's credit to Nico. Bolton is trying to mix it up. He seems like he's going for challenges that maybe he doesn't normally go for, and. You know, that's a good thing to do, I think, when a player is taking you out. you got to find out what's going to work for <laughs> you. And that'll really work for Bolton. If you can keep that up, yeah. um, I think he could win this game. He's a memer. He he <laughs> open-netted it. He let Bolton score for the 8-2 because, man, I bet Nika would hate to be Bolton right now. He said for you, <laughs> Mythic. I don't even know if Mythic's still around. Yeah, Bolton knows what's up. He knows, he knows exactly what that meant. <laughs> oh... I like it. I've, ca I've caught on to the 8-2. Um, that's good to see. And credit to Nico for having so much, uh, so, so much of a lead that he can uh, force that. Oh, the fake! Nico's oh. staring at double digits now. He's got two minutes to score just one goal for double digits. Do you think he can make uh, 20 goals? That seems a little bit ridiculous. Goals. But I mean, if you're if you're Bolton here, how defeated are you? You know, it's. <laughs> If you have you just completely given up on this game to the point where you're just gonna let Nico continue to score, I think Bolton needs to use this game as just like data analysis, right? Don't definitely don't give up, but try to find out what you can use to beat beat Nico. Although don't give any telling signs, just just find out where Nico is is uh, is weakest at. Even though it seems like it's impossible, surely something. <laughs> Although of course we could do this instead. <laughs> this is good. You never know. This is maybe the way to break down the uh, impenetrable defense of Nico. <laughs> but this is something that I see I see from players when they're trying to um, improve their game in general, not necessarily in a series. They'll start this shot, it's not going in, but uh, they'll, they'll change up what they're going for, and, and they'll honestly make a lot of mistakes, kind of like it gets worse before it gets better. Um, and I think that's what Bolton did. Maybe at the end of this game with them two just, you know, pivoting back and forth next to each other, that's just something completely different. But he was mixing it up. He was trying to see if, if there was something else that was going to work against Nico. And as long as he keeps his head on straight and doesn't let this one game affect him for the entire series, I do think we can see a comeback from Bolton 
Um, but the, it will require a little bit of slipping up from Nico, and it just does not seem like he's going to leave the window that open. Oh, <laughs> there's another shot from Nico. Yep, got to score the double digits. I think 20 is out of the question, but Nico does secure 10 goals here against Bolton in the grand finals. I definitely did not anticipate this. Wow, Nico is just running amok here. I mean, I've always heard about Nico and, and how good he is, and I've heard about Hoops and the name Nico's come up. And so, you know, it's nice to see it's he's well-deserving of the hype so far. Mm -hmm. I think he really gives hope to the the people who don't who don't ever want to be like the really flashy players. Like we've seen already this tournament, very early on too, people doing ceiling shots, flip resets, um, a double reset. Even we we caught a, a, the tail end of a double reset that was pretty sick. Uh, a lot of just very mechanical play, and Nico is none of that. He's just very very calculated the entire game. But you, it it works. You can see it. Every every little move he makes is just very very intentional. And uh, and it very rarely results in a goal against himself. It's just it's crazy to watch. Well, um, from your more expert opinion, what do you think we need to see from Bolton uh, in order to take a game number two? Ooh, I think we're, he needs to mix it up in every way possible. But he needs to be so sneaky with his mix up. So only change one kickoff per kickoff position. Uh, just enough so that Nico is like, okay, I, I gotta be, I gotta be careful. Bolton knows how to do that. Um, he needs to start faking, but again, you gotta be very careful with it. You need just the slightest of advantages here to turn it around. Get the lead in goals, and then play very defensive, and then make sure you don't get bumped. So it's a lot to ask for. I realize I just said like 13 <laughs> things, but I, I do think Bolton's capable of it. But you're right, Nico is on match point. It's up to Bolton now to make the most incredible comeback we've seen. Uh, yeah, Camber brings up a good point. So these tournaments we do every Sunday, uh, these are obviously sponsored by yours truly, or you guys in the chat. I mean, not me, you guys in the chat. They're sponsored by you and your generous donations, but they always, all the donations go um, towards like funding for these tournaments in some way, shape, or form. So um, Nico, if he wins, regardless of him being staff, even if he wins, he won't take a dime out of the winnings. It will go back into the prize pool for a later date. We might have another really cool tournament like this. I don't know if it'll be 1v1. Maybe it'll be another fifth Sunday tournament. Um, but it will be a tournament regardless. Probably there'll be some big event on the line. Obviously, we've got our anniversary coming up in February. I know that's a few months out, but uh, that's always something we've, we've done pretty well. And Nico is in the Scarab, <laughs> as is tradition. And he scored the first goal within 10 seconds, also as is tradition. <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, it's so great to see uh, a prize pool like this being provided by a community. I, I can't stress how awesome it was to hear about this happening and, and to put up such a great prize and attract, you know, a lot of attention from great players. I mean, you can't undervalue what that means to a community. And it's just awesome to see uh, these tournaments happening in, in the in the hoops world. Yeah, it is really, really cool that I mean, as, as a community very early on we decided to do that just so that we could continue to have these tournaments these tournaments are about having the competition here that psionics never wanted to have right it's we wanted to make hoops a competitive game mode for, for, from the get-go and we thought the best way to do that was to be was to have prizes and then we would just have the staff never take the prizes so we would always have like bigger and bigger tournaments as time went on so it's really cool i like <laughs> cmyk says host a 500 hundred dollar tourney 600 goes back into the pot <laughs> <laughs> yes it was our plan all along. Imagine if I was playing, dude, we'd have $900. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it. It's kind of like enticing the community. Like, hey, here, here's a bunch of money. If you can take it from us, exactly. feel free. But <laughs> we'll probably hold on to it, and you can try again. No better way to get some of the best players without uh, without enticing them with some cash prizes. And we did see just some really exceptional players tonight. I wish I could showcase more, but it was just so much talent here. Yeah, and in this game, Nico was making it look like it was going to be more of the same, going up 2-1. to one. But with Bolton scoring early, you know, a 2-1 oh, to lineup, God. I mean, it's going to be 3-1 to one now because, you know, Nico. But he is keeping it close so far. Look how, um, look how evil this is. He rim read it. He hit it towards the rim and then went extra high oh. to get the ball off the rim rather than dribbling it. Bolton is expecting a dribble. The last thing he's going to expect is Nico to hit it into the rim intentionally and then pick it up from there. He's using it as yeah, a Yeah, rim play. You know, rim play seems to be the way to win. You got to work on uh, on your rim play if you want to be a great hoops player. Ooh, good try, Bolton. He might have a chance here. Really good save from him. He went back and forth to get it. 
Both times getting assisted from the rim, but you got to do what you have to. He also avoided a bump from Nico as well on that save. So really, really good save. He does need to keep this defense just impeccable against Nico. Even in the Scarab, it seems like Nico's going to be weaker in the Scarab like it's a meme car, but it's been the meme car for so long that he's used to it. Like, this is actually just his secondary car now. Nico. Nice drop down. Good kill from Bolton. Oh, Nico faked it. How does he transition this into a goal? He's backing up, waiting for Bolton to make the move, and Bolton's flicked it. This could be dangerous. Nico pushes it to the side. Bolton is still on it, making sure to keep his car behind the ball at all times, and Nico's going to be pushing forward. Can he get the flick next? Gets the lift up, going for the 50, but Bolton is really strong from the backboard. He's able to clear that one to safety. No touch from Nico, though. That ball wobbled a lot. Bolton's going to take it from there. Gets the touch into the net. Now he's going to have to retreat. No, he actually tries to get the boost instead, but that might be a mistake. He's trying to keep this ball pinned in with nothing. He's going to have to retreat now. Nico next. Lifts it up. Bolton takes it away from his car. It's going to roll around the rim, and it's not in. Unfortunate for him. But Nico... I really love that early challenge from Bolton. We'll see if we get another early challenge here. Now this time, he's going to fake it, mix it up. I, I don't hate the mix-up, but I definitely like cutting the plays off uh, before Nico can get anything going. Usually when you're in maybe a mismatch type 1v1, this is... An interesting oh. setup. I, I wasn't sure if we were going to find the angle, but Nico the other way should be able to find a fourth. No, this time the he doesn't again. get the touch on the rim. But as I was saying, um, I think a hounding play style where you just kind of try and stay on the ball and and not let the opposition get their flow going <laughs> is a good style to take against a player who is maybe more skilled than you. Um, and Bolton is certainly trying to adapt that here in this game. Only two minutes to go. It's looking like disaster for Bolton. He's trying to get these reads on the rim. He's doing everything he can. Um, but he is, I think he's successfully getting Nico away from the ball. But this is how Nico wins. Again, Nico forces Bolton to make a commitment and then flicks it higher than you can imagine. We're talking all about how you just can't score with flicks, and Nico is just trying to make us look stupid. Right. So you can score with flicks, you're just not doing it right. Yeah. <laughs> the mistake people were making before when they were trying to flick it is they were not forcing their opponent to commit to it, right? You're going really fast, and then you flick it. Your opponent knows exactly where your flick is going to go, versus what Nico's doing is he slow dribbles it, gets it creeps closer and closer to your net until you get so nervous that you jump for it. He doesn't even use any boost to get the shot. He just gets this crazy flick. But what's crazier is... Flicking in the scarab like this, I feel like that's unheard of. Nico is doing a whole nother monster. He gets that save too! Nico, Are you what? kidding me? If you're Bolton, I don't know what you do! <laughs> He's making, I mean, you don't pass it to Nico like he kind of did Trey come here, on. but oh my <laughs> gosh, what a nice double. But Bolton's, I can't blame him, man. Nothing is working for him. Maybe just try passing it to him. Maybe that'll work. I don't know. Yeah, just so savage. He gets the perfect read. It's over the rim, too, so Bolton doesn't really want to commit to it because that would be an all-in for sure, him being on low boost and running back. But now he's down four goals with only a minute and a half to go, and Nico's in a scarab. Like, it's got to be the most humiliating defeat. And Nico gets a bump for goal number six, of course. Nico is, is unstoppable. It seems like for these flicks, this one is not quite a flick, but he does touch backboard. It almost seems like you want to avoid the backboard. Like that, that last flick that Nico scored on Bolton, he sent it almost to the ceiling and just straight down and in without touching the backboard. It, it seems like that makes it easier to save. True? Yeah, I, I would have to agree. I think <laughs> there's a lot of different ways you can try to make it easier to save, but sometimes when it's the, the ball is on the goal line, you just have to try to get any pinch you can possibly muster. Nico, though, on the dribble. But Bolton with the pre-flip doesn't have the touch. It's back down to Nico. He's taking it around the back wall. A pinch for him. He's going to send it upward. I think Bolton's going to be first on it. Goes for the pre-jump just to keep that one absolutely sure that it's safe. But he's really speeding it up here. And it makes sense. He doesn't have a lot of time to, to waste here. If he's going to try to catch back up, just go as fast as you can. Nico got it lifted. With 20, I think he's just going to fake it. Yeah. <laughs> Bolton has to Great respect play. that Nico has boost. And, of course, Nico has nothing. Nico forcing Bolton off the wall. He ha Bolton had to jump in order to avoid the demo, and then he tried his best to float back down into a favorable 50, but it did not work. Nico too clinical and is able to set that one up for a seven. Yep, got the seven to one. And I think Mythic is still in the chat. He's waiting in anticipation. The setup is almost there. <laughs> Nico's got it lifted. He has to retreat back. I think he can't be too upset at a goal right now. Ooh. It still doesn't go in, though. Bounces off the rim. Bolton is still on it, going as fast as he can. Nico doesn't read the rim for once in his life. But it's still out. 
So even when he doesn't read the rim, the rim's got his back. <laughs> exactly. My goodness, what what a tournament from Nico. Seriously. So at, at the end of all of it, you, I think you told me Nico dropped a single game? That's correct. He dropped a game to Fearless. Wow. And there's the eighth goal. I expect to see an open goal and a victory lap from Nico. Yo, <laughs> Mr. Swaggles with the five gifted subs. Thank you so much. CMYK has also gifted a sub to Young Evo. We saw uh, three people uh, redeem their, their third month of CMYK's gifted sub. So, geez, dude. He also... Gifted three months to karate. Jeez. I, I'll catch up on those subs in a second, but we, we hit the hype train. There is the goal, the open net, of course, from Nico. Bolton gonna finish it off. As the prophecy foretold. Gonna be 8-2 in the last game of the grand finals. GG's. Nico takes the entire 1v1 tournament. I can't say that I'm surprised, but I, I still am uh, still am absolutely thrilled at how well Nico played the whole time. He's just so calculated. We're going to try to get him in here for an interview. Uh, he, he has admin permission, so he can just go and do as he pleases. So we'll be talking to him shortly. But thank you so much. I'm going to be scrolling up here. Uh, oh, dude, Liquor Bagels gifted a sub as well to a swag caster. CMYK gifted to Luigi. CMYK with 500 bits. Is it not going to play the sound clip? Wait, hold on. It doesn't... Okay, I, I don't know what's broken with that. I'm sorry. Uh, let's see. Big Howls gifted a sub to... I sure do love getting rimmed on a Saturday show. afternoon. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, the five gifted subs from Swags. 100 bits from Kickin. Uh, I sure do love getting rimmed there on it is. Saturday <laughs> All right, all right. I'll play... Wait, it played it twice. Oh, I, I see why. It was still playing the sub noise. Wow, this is crazy, dude. Thanks so much, guys. For a, a, It's a great end to a hype tournament. Um, let's see. I'm here. Hey, he's here. Nico, congrats, dude. Thanks. That was, uh, that was pretty fun. Yeah, yeah. You sure sound like it. You're like, yeah, it's another, another day, another day. Well, one I mean, dude, tournament. after that first game, I was like, what is this series going to turn into? Right. Wow. Well, okay. So, Nico, you got to tell us all of your secrets. Reveal to us <laughs> the mystery of your ways. What, if you're trying to improve... If you're a player that is watching this and is like, I want to be just like that guy, how how do you suggest they improve their game? They have to put on the work. I've never done like custom training practice, but I've seen some really good custom training uh, packs out there that if you just grind those, like think of it as like just its own game. Like just take a break from ranked and just grind. It doesn't have to be a hoops pack. If you're trying to grind for soccer, just grind like a soccer training pack. Because you're gonna get so many more touches than you would in game. Um, I don't know. That's that's what I would recommend someone do. It just until they can hit every single shot 100% of the time, they aren't practiced enough. So just keep practicing. Okay. I, I have a question for you, Nico. Um, if I can jump in here. Yeah. So I was thinking about this uh, kind of before the tournament, actually, uh, wondering since since you're so used to the hoops arena or the hoops court, uh, if you were to play against a player kind of like you did, first killer, but without their name, without knowing that they play hoops regularly, can you tell right away that somebody is a transfer from soccer or a, mm. or more of a hoops regular? Yeah. There's a, a couple of telltale signs. If they don't take the backboard on like saves, if they just like jump from inside when it's less efficient, uh, I can usually tell. Um, How do you operate that's... differently when you get that? When you know it's a well, soccer that, that player. Just, that just means their defense is, is worse because they're using boost to make saves instead of driving up the wall mm -hmm. and saving boost. I mean, it doesn't change how I play. Um, if I'm playing like a soccer main, I think my biggest um, challenge this tournament was Fearless. He was insane, like <laughs> just everywhere. Wow. He was beating me at kickoffs like every single time. I don't wow. think I... I think I won maybe one, one or two kickoffs. He was winning every single one. He even boot me to what? score um yeah he so he's a high level soccer player um and he just brought his mechanics like ground air dribbles um double taps he was just everywhere did you get to so, watch the so game fast. between uh fearless and, it was like the game right before yours i think i'm gonna try to find it he played against bat no 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 no, no. hold on hold on yeah he did play against bat um, no, what was the game that we watched though i'm trying to find that was it it was taibu yeah fearless oh, was taibu. His no, game one was absolutely cracked. He made the 
Like, ceiling shots, two flip resets, I think, scored like eight goals, and I thought he was unstoppable. So I yeah. absolutely feel you. If he brought that game to you, I don't know how you won, to be honest. He yeah, he, like he, he took the so first strong. game off of me. Right. Um, I had to reverse sweep. <laughs> Jeez. Well, somehow you prevailed. What what did it what does it take to do to play against someone who really loves the air, the walls, the ceiling, flip resets, air bumps? What do you got to do against that? You just got to limit how many of those opportunities they're getting. Like you have to stick with them at midfield. You can't like back up to your net and let them shoot on you because they're most of the time they're good enough at offense where it doesn't matter if you're prepared. They're gonna they have so many options. Like flip reset on you. Um, I don't know. Just just don't give them space. You have to meet them at mid. Right. I think that's I think that's exactly the way that you play defense in soccer too against those players who love the air dribbles and love the air dribble bumps. It's all about I mean the people talk about how they're impossible to defend and they kind of are, but the way to defend them is to make sure they never happen in the first place. And so right. people will watch these one v ones where air dribble bumps happen over and over again, and they think this is so boring, it, it can't be beat. Well, the way it's beat is when you never even see them, and the reason why you don't see them is because the player's playing defense enough to not even let them you know come out in the first place it sounds like right. you're saying the same thing about hoops yeah i like to like suffocate my opponents like not even give them um, chances to score like i was playing against kepfert um before the tournament just scrimming him and uh i asked him like what's better my offense or defense he said my offense because my offense is my defense because i just never uh, you know have to rely on my defense except for game mm -hmm. one against bolting i had to pull out all the saves yeah seriously I was going to ask you about about game one versus you know games two and three because now that I remember you you did win game one by sneaking just one, one of them over the rim yeah. right mm -hmm. and it was a one zero -oh game and then the next couple games I mean you had figured it out so was there anything you consciously realized in the next couple to get it going or what I mean the the main difference was I wasn't able to get a more than a one goal lead and so I was just playing so much more um, passive and nervous. Then when I got early leads in the other two games, like early in the game, I was able to just relax and play more comfortably. Like I was, I was whiffing a lot and just making a lot of mistakes in game one because of the, the nervousness.